Welcome back to Everyday Ordinary Life with Mark. And this is the final time we get together for 2022. Uh, believe it or not, here just in a couple days, we'll be in the 2023. So I thought I'd give us some words today of encouragement as we head in to the new year. As I've said before, we are seasonal people. We, we like to be able to really note times in our lives, whether it be birthdays or anniversaries or beginnings of school years, our four seasons in the year, if you live in a place that actually looks like it has four seasons. We, at the end of the year, often have time to reflect on what the year was like and then January comes around and people say, I'm going to make some resolutions. I'm going to try to change things. We all know that most of those don't happen, but hopefully some of them do. But in this time of year, as we close out this year, I want to give you words of encouragement for next year. And these come out of the book of first John, uh, in chapter three, it says here in the first part of chapter three, see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Hear that again. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Let's take, take three thoughts from those couple sentences that are really gonna help me and help you go into 2023 with our heads held high. First of all, notice that the Bible says here that God lavishes us with love. Lavish, that is exuberant. That is, that is an amazing amount. That is overdoing, uh, lavishing us with love. I love the fact that God is not somebody who just gets by. God is not somebody that just gives a little. You even go back to the beginning of the story, the history where God creates everything. And he does so in such a beautiful way, the heavens and the earth, the animals and all the creativity and the ultimately the different people groups and the color of the skin and languages and the way we are so different yet united, this lavishing us, uh, lavishing creation and then lavishing in love that he doesn't just sort of love us, he, he lavishes us, he, he surrounds us with his love, he, he shows us glimpses of himself through the love that we experience from other people and the gift of his word and the gift of fellowship of Christian community. And he just pours and pours us on our, we pray for our daily bread and he gives us even more uh, than we deserve. We, uh, most of us have way more than we need. Uh, certainly uh, more than uh, we uh, have for our daily sustenance. We are able to look to the future and say, uh, God's gonna provide and that's lavishing love. And then the second thing we see here is a reason why. He lavishes us with that love, and then we are called children of God. Children of God. Now, it is a sad thing that there are children who do not receive uh, the love that they need to receive. And we need to recognize that, and we need to pray for children in that situation and reach out to children in that situation. But by and large, children are love. Children receive love. I'm a father of three children and a father-in-law to my daughter's husband. And I, I love these young people. I say children, I don't really think of them as children anymore. We have one at home and two off on, on their life, doing life as God's called them to call it, to live it. And they are children. And I, I call them children, even though they're young adults, because these are people that Bonnie Kay and I have raised and we poured love and energy and money uh, in, into these people that have become young adults. I am, I'm proud to call them my kids and I take care of them because they're my kids. Um, if I know you, I love you, uh, but I gotta be honest. I'm, if I have to choose between you and my kid, I'm choosing my kid. And, and get this image when it says here that we are children of God. God doesn't just love you as his creatures. God just doesn't love you as some kind of organism that God put on this planet. When you come to him through his son, you are adopted back into his family, even though you are still yet a sinner. He loves you as his child, as his son, as his daughter. And he pours this into you, this love that children receive from parents who love them. And just in case we didn't really believe that, this third thing that John says, because he feels that he needs to emphasize this, hear it again 
the, I'm right there in verse one, it says, and that is what we are. He's just called us children of God. How blessed we are to be called children of God. And just in case we don't believe it, John says, and that is what we are. Folks, that is what we are. That is what you are. You are a child of God. And because you're a child of God, and because we know he is the perfect father, not the selfish father, not the mean father, not the griping father, he is the loving, perfect father that he has love for you. I cannot think of any more powerful words than these that are gonna help us live 2023 as it's meant to be lived. Know that God lavishes love, particularly on his children, and that you are one of those children. Take that knowledge into 2023. No matter what 2022 has been like for you, uh, know that in the days to come, you have a God in your life who loves you. God is going to lavish you with love as one of his children.